Naruto had awakened to see that Sasuke was already up and dressed. After letting his eyes get adjusted to his surrounding, he then looked around to see that the beds around him were neatly made. He then turned his head to Sasuke. What time is it? It's 3 in the morning. Everyone is up getting prepared. I suggest you clean up so we can be prepared to move out at 0400 hours. This was the response given by Sasuke. Naruto slowly lifted himself out of the bed. He walked to the bathroom to freshen himself up. Before he walked past Sasuke, who was leaning against a wall in the bathroom with his arms folded, the Uchiha spoke. I'll be in the girls' room. I expect you to be in there in 15 minutes, so we can go over a few things. Naruto looked at Sasuke and nodded. He then entered the bathroom to freshen up. Sasuke left the room and headed to the room that belonged to the females in the group. The holder of the Sharingan entered the room. Sakura was sitting on a bed next to Hanabi and looked up. Oh, Sasuke, you're here. All of us are ready to head out whenever you are. I assume that Naruto is getting ready as we speak. He nodded. Yes, in a bit. Sakura, where are Hinata, Konohamaru, and Udon? They went to get something to eat at the local tavern, Sakura answered. Sasuke went to lean on a wall next to the window. Hanabi was fixing the gloves on her hand. Her chunin slash jonin vest was lying neatly on the floor next to her sandals. The said Noichi placed her headband on her forehead. She then slipped into her black sandals and put on her vest. Sakura was already fully dressed in the standard chunin slash jonin outfit. Just when Sakura got off of the bed to stand up, Hinata, Konohamaru, and Udon walked into the room. Hello, Hanabi. Konohamaru greeted the younger Hyuka. She liked the boy. Hello. She returned the greeting emotionlessly. Sakura looked at Hinata, who was standing next to Konohamaru. So, what'd you guys get? We got some rice bowls and some water from a local shop that was surprisingly open at this hour. Hinata responded. Hinata looked around the room, seeing one person missing from the group. Sakura, where's Naruto? Sakura spoke up. He should be here any minute. Right on cue, Naruto walked into the room, sporting a navy blue jacket and pants with blue sandals. His outfit was an exact copy of almost everyone else's, excluding the vest. Sasuke wore a black outfit with the Uchiha symbol on the back of his vest. Morning everyone, Naruto said, greeting everyone in the room. Everyone with the exception of Hanabi and Sasuke returned the greeting. Sasuke walked up to the table that was similar to the one in the boys' room. He then laid out the map and ordered everyone to gather around. Sasuke pointed to a marking on the map. Okay, we're here and we need to go there. According to Naruto's intel, we should run into the enemy ninjas about here. Getting past the ninjas really isn't the problem. The problem is getting across the border undetected. If I were by myself, then it would be no problem to do so. But there is a group of us, and we all vary in speed. Sakura, Naruto, and I have the speed necessary to get past undetected. E4, on the other hand, I'm not so sure about, which is why we're leaving in about 45 minutes. I see. You want us to stay under the cover of night. Even if we don't have the speed, getting across undetected should be easier. The darkness gives us a great advantage, Hanabi said, understanding Sasuke's intentions. Naruto looked at Hinabi. That's not the only reason we have the advantage. She gave Naruto a questionable look. Care to elaborate on what you mean by that not being our only advantage? Sasuke spoke before Naruto could explain. What I think Naruto means is we're at an advantage because we have two Hugas, whose Byakuyan can see at night as if it were day. The enemy doesn't have this advantage, but we do, and it'll help us get past the border patrol. That's what you're going to say, right Naruto? Yeah, something along those lines. Jeez, you're not to cut me off, Sasuke. Naruto thought. Sasuke continued to speak. We're going to use the same formation that we used yesterday. Also, we're going to be stopping in a town about 6 miles east of the ninja outpost we are to infiltrate. We'll rest there until about 6.30pm. Then we will make our move on the base. I want us in and out by 8pm. Naruto gave a slight smirk. I have to admit that you have a perfect plan, Sasuke. It seems that you are somewhat familiar with the Land of Lightning. Sasuke took his eyes uh, off of the map. I've been there once. 
and you notice that minor detail by just being there once? Naruto questioned. I try to not overlook anything. A minor detail can be monumental to the success of a mission, Sasuke responded. So true. Most shinobi forget that, and it's most often times their downfall. Konohamaru, along with Hanabi, Hinata, and Udon, were looking at the two former members of the well-known Team 7. Why do we have to be in and out by 8pm, and what is that minor detail that you two speak of? Konohamaru asked. Sakura was the one to respond. It's simple, Konohamaru. The sun sets at approximately 7.30 every day in the Land of Lightning. By the time we have the scroll, we have come here to obtain it, and it'll be hard to track us. Kazuha will be under the cover of the night. That is what Sasuke and Naruto meant by that minor detail. It's easy to overlook, but it really shouldn't be. I have to say that this is a great plan, Sasuke. Out of the corner of his eye, Naruto looked at Sakura and smirked. I'm impressed that you noticed that detail as well, so it seems that you have gotten better while I was gone. You two aren't the only ones who were trained by Sanin. Besides, I've been in the Land of Lightning once on a reconnaissance mission. I don't know my way around the country like you, but I do know when to look for advantages, Sakura said, grinning from ear to ear. And Abi looked at Sasuke. So, what is our contingency plan? Konohamaru looked at Hanabi quizzically. Contingency plan? What do you mean by contingency? She looked at him with annoyance. Are you serious? You are the grandson of the third, and you don't know what I mean by contingency? Hinata spoke up while looking at Konohamaru. It means backup plan, Konohamaru. Oh, okay, he said with a better understanding. There isn't one. Naruto's words filled the air so Hanabi could hear. The younger Hyuga spoke in an aggressive manner. What do you mean there isn't one? We need a backup plan in case this one fails. Sasuke turns his attention to the young Hyuga. This is the only option. Our village is at war with the cloud, rain, and rock, so it's safe to assume that their ninjas are everywhere. Also, he pointed to Naruto. His presence puts us in even more danger. Everyone turned to Naruto. Sakura was first to speak. What do you mean by putting us at even more risk, Naruto? He means that ninjas from the rain and rock village are ordered to kill me on sight, Naruto answered. And Hobby became more curious by this new development. You must have done something for them to want to kill you on sight. What did you do? Naruto got a sad look in his eyes. He closed his eyes to hide his emotions. He spoke in a calm manner. I don't want to talk about it. All you need to know is that they want my head. We don't spoke up. So that clears up the mystery. Hanabi looked at the Chunin who wore glasses. What do you mean by that? Udon decided to answer a question. If you guys were to look at the bingo book more often, you would see that Naruto is listed as an S-Class Ninja. I believe the exact words were Wanted for crimes committed in rain and earth country. Extremely dangerous. Avoid at all costs. Am I right, Sasuke? Yes. Udon, I believe it was along those lines. He looked at Naruto. I could care less why you would do what you did. I'm sure you had your reasons, but if I feel that you are a danger to everyone else in this mission, I will dismiss you. I have a zero casualty rate for teams that I lead, and I would like to keep it that way, the Uchiha said. Naruto nodded in understanding. Personally, he didn't want to put everyone in danger, but he knew that he would if he was discovered in the Land of Lightning. They clearly had the advantage, and they would send out a large amount of ninjas to apprehend him. He wasn't really worrying about himself. He knew he would be alright, but his team was a different story. If the enemy got a hold of his teammates, they would use them for leverage to get Naruto. His thoughts were interrupted by Hinata. Naruto isn't the only one that put this mission at risk. Hanabi and I also put this mission at risk as well. You're right, it seems that the cloud has been after the secrets of the Byakugan since the beginning. This is a delicate situation, but we are the best of the best, Sakura said, trying to boost the team's morale. Hell yeah we are, Konamaru shattered in agreement. Hanabi looked at him, even more annoyed. Although, I don't share his enthusiasm, I am inclined to agree. Lady Tanade wouldn't have selected this group if she didn't believe in us. It's time, let's go, Sasuke informed his team. The team filled out of the room and sped off to their intended destination. It only took them two minutes to reach the forest. 
he immediately took to the trees. It would only take them 20 minutes to reach the enemy camp and another hour or so to reach the border. Sasuke spoke. Hanabi, do you see anything? Yes, about 5 miles ahead, there are 16, 17, 18. There are 18 ninjas ahead of us. There are 8 cloud ninjas, 7 rain ninjas, and 3 rock ninjas to be exact. The young Kyuga answered. The lack of rock ninja clearly shows that they are having a hard time with Suna forces. That's most likely why there is a low number of rock ninjas. The blonde shinobi pointed out. Sakura spoke. It would seem that our allies in the sand are doing a good job of keeping rock ninjas out of our territory, as well as others. Hanabi came to a sudden halt caused everyone to stop. She scanned the area looking for something that might be hidden. When she found what she was looking for, she turned to Sasuke. It seems that there are numerous traps set up. How shall we proceed, Sasuke? Sasuke thought to himself for a moment. He finally had a solution. Hinata, come here to the front with Hinabi. You two will guide us through these traps, since the two of you have the eyes necessary. It shouldn't be a problem. Hanabi and Hinata led the group. The group surprisingly got past the enemy with ease. In fact, all of them felt that it was too easy, but they knew that the hard part was probably getting past the border. They had about an hour until they reached the border, and time was of the essence. The group was slowly losing their advantage. The sun was set to rise soon. One hour later, the group reached the border of the land of lightning and rice. They stopped to scout the area. Hinata was looking around to see if she saw any more ninjas. She quickly spotted 11 cloud guards about a mile west of her and 20 more about 3 miles east of her. She knew Hinabi saw what she saw as well. Sasuke, there are 11 guards a mile west of here and 20 more 3 miles east of here. The ninjas that are 3 miles east of here aren't the problem. It's the 11 ninjas a mile west away from here. They're moving pretty fast and should be closing in on this location in about 5 minutes, Yata said, informing her squad. We have no choice. Everyone, we move now at top speed. We can't afford to get spotted. The next village is only 4 miles north of here. First to file out will be Udon, followed by Konohamaru, Hinata, Hanabi, Sakura, Naruto, and myself. We move now. Sasuke gave the command and everyone was gone from their previous spot. The team was moving at top speed. Naruto was looking at the sky. The sun was slowly coming over the horizon. And this was bad. They had a possibility of getting caught if they didn't get to the nearby village soon. Running for approximately 3 minutes, the team had crossed the border and were now officially in the land of lightning. Naruto stopped immediately. This caught the attention of Sasuke, who yelled for everyone else to slow down. The team was in the middle of a cornfield of a farm that was not too far from their current destination. Sasuke walked up to Naruto and asked, Why did you stop? We can't enter a village in the land of lightning without disguising ourselves. I'm sure that there are cloud ninjas all over this country. Besides, Hinata and Hinabi are holders of the Yakugan. With them walking around as themselves, we are at risk of being exposed. Also, I'm quite sure I'm in their bingo book, so it'll be easy to point me out as well. Naruto's right, Sasuke. We can't take that chance. It compromises our mission, Udon stated. Sasuke nodded. You're right. It'll be easy to point out those two and yourself. The rest of us don't really need to change, but I recommend that we all change our appearance. We use these transformations in the presence of the townspeople. Once we check into the hotel, we will transform back to conserve chakra. We will rent two rooms like last time. I expect everyone to get a decent sleep and be up no later than 1 p.m. Everyone performed a transformation. Sasuke was now a man with long brown hair and blue eyes who wore black pants and a white shirt. Sakura's hair was now purple but her eye color remained the same. She now wore a red shirt with white pants. Hinata changed her eye color to purple. She now wore a sky blue jacket with a hood and perfect capri pants. Hanabi's shirt was purple along with her pants. She changed her eye color to light brown. Udon only changed his clothes to a blue sweatshirt and gray shorts that fell two inches below the knees. Naruto changed his hair and his eye color to brown. He was now wearing a bright orange shirt with black pants. Konohamaru's transformation surprised everyone. We all glared at the boy who had no idea why they were looking at him like that. What's the matter? Something on my face? The boy questioned. Hanabi walked up and smacked him in the head. What 
the hell are you thinking by transforming into a girl who looks like a slut? Ah, oh, you're such an idiot. Actually, Konohamaru might be onto something here. This might work in our favor, after all, Naruto said to the young Hyuga. See, Nabi? Big Brother Naruto doesn't think my transformation is a bad idea, Konohamaru said proudly. What do you mean by Naruto? Not to ask. She suddenly saw that Naruto had a sinister look in his eyes. Last time I saw that look in his eyes, he painted the Hokage Monument the next day. I don't like that look. What are your plans, bro? Konohamaru wondered. Naruto, still with the sinister look in his eyes, smiled at the group. Well, Hinata, I was thinking we could use Konohamaru to get some information, that's all. Sakura and Sasuke gave Naruto suspicious looks. Is he suggesting what I think he's suggesting? Not the two former members of Team 7. Sasuke smirked. I have to say, Naruto, that this is a great idea. What about you, Sakura? Do you agree? It's wrong on so many levels, but since Konohamaru has the right idea of transforming into a female and dressed like that, no less, I'd say he deserves what's in store for him, Sakura said with a smirk forming on her face as well. You know, his eyes widened at what Naruto was getting at. You can't be serious, Naruto. You wouldn't subject Konohamaru to that, would you? It's not my call, but I think Sasuke would disagree with me. Would you, Sasuke? Naruto asked the squad captain. No disagreements here. It's actually good for the mission, Sasuke said with his arms folded and his eyes closed while nodding. Why is this idiot transformation into a girl good for the mission? Nabi asked Sasuke. Because I don't think you or any of the girls will want to degrade yourself. There is no chance in hell that I'm going to do it, Sasuke said. Konohamaru was now nervous. What is it that I have to do? Naruto looked at Konohamaru. Konohamaru, you're going to use the sexy jutsu for the purpose it was created. I thought it was made for a... Wait a minute, you, you can't be serious, big brother Naruto. I refuse to do this. You guys can't make me. There's no chance in hell, Konohamaru said with a tone of finality. You're doing this, and that's final. If you don't, I will have you doing D rank missions for the next two years. So, I ask you, do you refuse or accept to do this? Sasuke asked the transformed Chunin. <sighs> I'll do it, Konohamaru said in a low grunt. Alright, now that's settled, let's head into town. The main road is over there, let's go. The team was now walking through the cornfield to the road that headed to the town. They reached the road in no time, and were now on their way to town. The Leaf Squad made it to town around 6 in the morning. The sun was finally out, and it was shining brightly. The group checked into the hotel, and everyone went to sleep. They all decided to wake up at 1 p.m. to prepare for the mission that would occur later in the evening. Midday in Konoha. Yumi was walking down the street with Ino. Ino had insisted that she take her out again today, since they had a good time yesterday. Ino decided that today would be different. Today would be the day she would get information on Naruto. The only thing she got out of Yumi yesterday was that he had a frog wallet. Ino decided to invite Yumi to join her and a few others for lunch. The ladies arrived at the local barbecue shack, where they were greeted by a large group. The group consisted of Anko, Kuranai, Guy, Asuma, Tenten, Choji, Rock Lee, and Ebisu. Ino, followed closely by Yumi, walked up to the group. Hey guys, how's it hanging? Everything is fine, you know. Would you and your guest care to join us? We offered. Sure, why not? You know, and Yumi sat with the group. Anko looked at Yumi. So, you're Naruto's friend, eh? Yumi nodded in agreement. Yes, I'm Naruto's girlfriend. Why do you ask? Just curious, that's all. Anko answered. So, we meet again, Yumi. It is a pleasure, as always. The beautiful green beast will voluntarily pay for the meal of your choice. Guy flashed Yumi a smile that caused a sweat to form on everyone's head. Anko nudged Guy. Careful Guy, you wouldn't want Naruto to get jealous now, would you? Don't worry about Naruto, he's not the jealous type. Besides, I don't think Guy was hitting on me, Yumi answered. Ino spoke. If he isn't the jealous type, then what type of guy is he? Ino asked, hoping to gain insight on what Naruto was up to for the past six years. Yumi thought for a minute before answering Ino's question. Well, I would say that he is loyal, sweet, and working, selfless, and caring. He sounds wonderful from your description, Yumi, the red-eyed Jonin stated. Tenten spoke. He also forgot to mention that he is super strong. He even beat Sasuke. 
Yumi smiled at Tenten. He is strong, but I could care less. To me, he is just Naruto. Yumi, do you know the location of the lady that gave Naruto his gravity seals? Lee asked. Sorry, Lee. I don't know. Honestly, I didn't know he had the gravity seal thing until he fought that Sasuke guy. Yumi answered. Lee put his head down in defeat, only to have God cheer him up. Everyone ignored the two and continued talking. I wondered how Naruto got so strong. Yumi, did he ever tell you where he went when he left the village? You know, asked. Well, he told me he trained with the ninja and that he also trained with the samurai. What do you want to know? Yumi questioned. Just curious, that's all. He beat our future Hokage, just wondering about the training that he went under. I mean, it had to be something if he beat Sasuke. You know, reasoned, not trying to seem suspicious. Well, you'll have to ask Naruto when he gets back from his mission. I'm sure he'll tell you if you ask him, said the brown-haired girl. That's why I asked you, because there's no way that he'll tell any of us, you know, thought. Kurt and I spoke up once more. I'm curious, Yumi. Did Naruto ever tell you about his exploits in Raining Earth Country? Yumi knew the story. Naruto told her what he did and why he did it. She wasn't mad. In fact, she believed it was a noble thing to do. She looked at the Junin. Yes, I know what he did, and I know his reason. However, he will tell you his reason for his actions. I will not tell you why he did uh, what he did, because uh, it's not my place. Everyone at the table, with the exception of Abisu, knew what he did. Tintin, Lee, Ino, and Choji, Anko were in the Anbu, so they knew about what happened. Although Ino didn't believe that he was as good as his reputation had warranted. When they went to retrieve him and he placed a kunai at her neck without her detecting him, she knew that the rumors were true. Tenten now knew for a fact that the rumors were true. Just by a fight with Sasuke, Karnai, Asuma, and Guy basically knew about every S-class, A-class, and B-class ninja in the bingo book. Even though it wasn't stated in the bingo book, which was odd to them, they made it their business to know why he was listed. Those who didn't know what he did knew that he was feared in those countries. However, there were some that were clueless to what he did, mostly the Chunins and a few Jonins, Sakura and Hinata included. Ebisu knew Naruto was feared in those countries, but he had no idea what he did to be feared. What did he do that caused him to be ranked in S-Class? You might want to ask the Hokage that information is restricted, Kashi stated outside of the window while reading his book. Karanai eye twitched. How long have you been there, Kakashi? Kakashi folded his book and put it in his pouch. I was here for five minutes, but you guys seem to be enjoying yourselves. I didn't want to ruin the moment. Anyway, Ebisu, you probably don't know this info because it's mostly told to field ninjas who usually take high-risk missions. Field ninjas who take high-risk missions have a high chance of running into high-level ninjas. It's only reasonable that they know who they're up against. And that explains why Sakura doesn't know. She spends most of her time at the hospital and rarely goes on missions, Hino stated. Hinata doesn't know either. I wonder if her opinion of him will change when she finds out. Hinata's former sensei thought. It doesn't matter. Everyone who doesn't know will find out soon enough. Anyway, I'm off. I have a mission. You guys have a nice day. Kashi waved at everyone. He walked away from the window. Guy decided to change the subject. Yumi, how do you like Konoha? The village is okay. I received some glares from the villagers, but I guess that's because of Naruto's situation. Yumi replied. I wonder if she's referring to the fox, or because he defeated Sasuke in combat, Guy thought to himself. Yeah, I guess, I mean, when you beat the village's precious Uchiha, you're bound to receive hate, Choji said. Ten Ten looked at Choji. First Shikamaru, now you two? What do you guys have against Sasuke? Choji's steely gaze focused on Ten Ten. He's a traitor to this village. You would do good to remember that. He's going to be Hokage, Choji. You all know that uh, Hokage fights to protect the village, and even sacrificed their life if necessary, Ino said in Ten Ten's defense. He may be Hokage, but to me, he will always be a traitor. As a leaf ninja, it's my duty to follow the orders of the Hokage, but that doesn't mean I have to respect the Hokage. I'm not hungry anymore. I think I'll go for a walk. I'll see you guys later. Choji placed his money on the table to pay his bill, then uh, walked out of the restaurant. Asuma sighed. He then pulled out a cigarette to smoke. Uncle looked at Choji's retreating form. I wonder why he and most of the guys that graduated in his year don't like Sasuke. Was it because he was more popular? Lee answered a question. I think it has something to do with the mission to retrieve Sasuke, Anko. 
Most of us were hurt badly trying to retrieve Sasuke. Choji and Neji almost lost their lives, while Kiba, Akamaru, Shikamaru, and I were badly injured. I don't think that caused them to resent Sasuke. It has something to do with Naruto's exile. Most of us felt it was wrong that Naruto was blamed for the failed mission, but more mad at the fact that Sasuke was welcomed back with open arms. I don't hate anybody. It's not in my youthful nature, but what Choji said is true. He is a traitor and the village holds him on a pedestal. It's unfair and wrong. Ankuro shrugged. Whatever, you guys might dislike him, but you will have to listen to him when he's leader of this village. Least it up. You're right. Excuse me, everyone, but I have to train. You guys enjoy your meal. Goodbye, Yumi. I hope we meet again. Lee bowed and walked off. Yumi was thinking about a certain blonde haired ninja and smiled. Naruto, please come back soon. 1 p.m. in a village in the land of lightning. Everyone was awake and gathered in the room that belonged to the guys. Sasuke was going over the plan. Okay, remember, we're here to leave this location at 1800 hours. I want to arrive at the ninja outpost no later than 1900 hours. Like I said in Rice, we are to be in and out within an hour. Sasuke looked at Konohamaru and flashed him a smirk. Since you have uh, volunteered your services, your job will be to get some info. I'm quite sure that there is a ninja that you can promise a good time and lower back here. Sasuke then turned his attention to Naruto. Naruto, I want you to scout the area by the base. Also take Hanabi with you. I think she could be beneficial to this reconnaissance assignment. Hanabi was about to protest, but was cut off by Sasuke. That is final, Hanabi. I don't care if you don't like Naruto. The only thing I care about is if you get the information that is needed. Why can't Hinata go? The girl asked. I want her, Udon, and Sakura to scout the town. Was the answer Sasuke had given. Everyone here has an assignment. What do you plan to do? Naruto directed his question at the last Uchiha. Sasuke answered, I'm going to watch over Konohamaru. When he succeeds, I will gather info from whatever ninja he brings back. But if he fails to do so, then it's not a big deal. Naruto spoke, I guess not. Not being I are the fail-safe plan, even if Konohamaru fails. We still will know the area and the ninja outpost pretty well. Okay, everyone, let's head out. Everyone headed out to their intended locations. 20 minutes later, near the outpost, Naruto and Hanabi were scouting around the area. Both were looking for around the base. Hanabi studied Naruto for a minute. What Sasuke said earlier about him had her wondering. Can I ask you something, Naruto? The blonde looked at the girl. Okay, I guess so. What did you do in the land of earth and rain that was so bad? Asked the Kyuga. Naruto looked at the girl for a second, then turned away. I said that I didn't want to talk about it, so drop it. Let's finish this mission so we can get back to the hotel. If you would Hinabi, please scan the building. Hinabi was mad that he didn't tell her, but she complied and scanned the building. She looked at Naruto. There are a total of 30 guards in the tower. There are 20 cloud, 6 rain, and 4 rock ninjas. The ninja outpost has 3 floors, and the scroll is heavily guarded. Let's go. I will brief you more when I inform the others. Both shinobi blurred out of existence. Konohamaru had convinced a young rock ninja to come back with him to his room. He had promised the rock ninja a good time. When he and the rock ninja entered the room, the rock ninja was quickly disabled by Sasuke. The rock ninja looked at Sasuke, then back at Konohamaru. What the hell is going on? The rock ninja asked. Konohamaru dropped the transformation and changed it back to himself. The ninja was shocked at what he saw. He turned to see Sasuke that he had activated the Sharing Gun. This caused the ninja more fear. <laughs> You're Sasuke Uchiha, aren't you? The man asked in fear. Yes, and depending on how you answer, you might live. Now, I want information about the ninja outpost 20 miles from here. If you don't comply in your free will, then uh, I'll gain the info with my Sharingan. If it comes to that, I will torture you so bad that you'll be begging for me to kill you. So, are you going to make this easy, or are you going to make this hard? Sasuke said to the Chunin with a smile, hoping that he would choose the latter. The ninja from Rock trembled under Sasuke's eyes. I, I will tell you everything that I know, just don't kill me. Sakura, Udon, and Hinata entered the room to see that Konohamaru's mission was a success. They walked up behind Sasuke, who had the ninja on the floor, against the wall. A few seconds later, Hanabi and Naruto entered into the room. The rock ninja caught a glimpse of Naruto, and his eyes widened. 
He kept backing up, but he was blocked by the wall behind him. Naruto looked at the ninja and saw the fear in his eyes. Please don't kill me, I will tell you everything, just don't kill me, the ninja pleaded. Sasuke looked at Naruto, then back at the ninja and smiled. It seems he'll be useful. You better tell us what we want to know, or I'll sick my friend on you. I'll tell you everything, just don't let that monster hurt me, the rock ninja pleaded with Sasuke. Sakura glanced at Naruto. What did you do that has this man scared to death, Naruto? I wonder why I wasn't informed of what he did. I guess I ought to question Lady Sanade about this. He knocked down the rest of the gang who were thinking along the same lines as Sakura. Naruto was now pissed at being called a monster. He walked up to Ninja and picked him up with one hand. His eyes narrowed, causing him to get even more scared. What right do you have to call me a monster? I did what I did for a reason, and I will not hesitate to do it again if the situation arises. The ninja's eyes paled at Naruto's comment. You would do it again? Only a monster would feel no remorse for their actions. That might be true, but like I said, I won't hesitate if the situation arises again. Naruto dropped the ninja to the ground. Sasuke walked back up to the ninja to gather answers. Give us info on the base, Sasuke demanded. Uh, okay, there are three floors. There are at least 30 ninjas in the base, varying from cloud to rock and to rain ninjas. The top floor is heavily guarded. There is a scroll, but only the cloud ninjas know what's in the scroll. That is all I know. Please don't kill me. They expect me back at the base in another hour, and if I don't turn up, they'll get suspicious. The ninja pleaded with Sasuke not to do anything rash. Sasuke activated his Sharingan, and the man passed out. What'd you do to him? Sakura asked. He'll forget what happened here, and he'll head back to work when he wakes up. We'll set up in the other room and go over our strategy there. Hanabi and Naruto will inform us of their findings, while you, Hinata, and Udon will inform us of this town's layout, Sasuke stated. Sasuke placed the guy on the bed and had Sakura take off his clothes to make it look like he and the Konohamaru's hench form had uh, an exciting time together. After Sakura undressed him, she and the others went to the other room that they had rented. 6.30 p.m. near the ninja outpost. The team was near the outpost and ready to make their move. Nabi and Hinata had their Byakugan activated. Sasuke's Sharingan was activated as well. Sasuke was in front of the group. He signaled for everyone to slow down. After a few minutes had passed, everyone got close to the outpost undetected. Sasuke decided it was time to hand out the wireless communication mics. From here on out, we're splitting up. Hinata, Sakura, and Udon are with Naruto. Hanabi and Konohamaru, you're with me. Naruto, your team will take the west wing, while my team will take the east. Since we know what to expect, we should be out of here soon. My team will go after the scroll, while your team will take out the guards on the first and second floor. We won't move until you confirm that your task is complete. We'll wait here for you to give the signal. Naruto nodded and his team headed out. They entered the outpost with no problem. Naruto used a bind jutsu on the six guard that was on that floor. He then ordered Hinata to disable them with her gentle fist. After Hinata did as he said, Naruto made shadow clones that replicated the ninjas while he and the others placed the guards dead bodies in a storage closet nearby. They moved onto the next floor and ran into nine guards. The same process was done to the guards on this floor that was done to the guards on the first level. Naruto wondered why this was so easy. He didn't complain, he just made sure that he was on guard. Level 1 and 2 cleared, Naruto said speaking into the wireless mic. Sasuke and the rest of his team had entered on the east wing. There were 13 more guards that had to be taken care of. Sasuke and Naruto both were thinking the same thing when they used the binding jutsu on the ninjas. What they didn't expect was three ninjas to be powerful to break free of it. The three ninjas were now looking at the Kunaha ninjas that outnumbered them. Well, if it isn't Sasuke Uchiha and Naruto Uzumaki, but Golden Fox himself. No wonder why my guards can't move. What are the chances of running into two of the most feared ninjas out here? Cloud Shinobi spoke. We do know that you will die here. You have no chance of winning, so move aside so we can get the scroll and we'll be on our way. Sasuke said flatly. The Cloud Ninja narrowed his eyes at Sasuke. Don't underestimate us. It will be your downfall. Sasuke smirked the ninja. 
Oh, Hanabi, disable the ninjas caught in the binding jutsu. Hanabi disabled the ninja caught in the binding jutsu. The rock jonin and rain jonin were glaring at Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki, today you will die for what you did, the rock ninja said. I also have a score to settle with you, Uzumaki, the rain ninja said. Both jonins charged Naruto, who didn't even prepare a defense. Currently in Konoha, a council had called a meeting concerning Naruto. Homura was the first to speak up. Tsunade, we want to discuss Naruto. We wish to give him missions suited to his capabilities. Tsunade glared at the old man. You want to give him suicide missions, is what you're trying to say. Koharu looked at the Hokage. I don't think the missions that we plan for him to take will be suicide. Judging by what he did in the rain in Earth Country, these missions shouldn't be too difficult. Hiyashi spoke. Lady Tsunade, Naruto is more than capable of handling missions that are in enemy territory. We feel he is the best candidate to do so. If you don't wish for him to be alone, then I will let you assign my eldest child to help him. She may be weak, but she is a Hyuga, and that is more than adequate. So now I give Hiyashi a look of disgust. I will not prevent Naruto to take suicide missions. I will not do that to him or any of our ninjas. You are willing to endanger the life of a leaf shinobi, who happens to be your daughter by having her assigned to dangerous missions. She is a shinobi of the leaf. She knows the risk of being one, Hiyashi answered. What about the Byakugan? Hinata is the heir to the main house, but if that falls in the enemy hands, it could be disastrous for the leaf. Tsunade so questioned Hiyashi. Don't worry about it. Hinata will become a branch member upon her return. The Byakugan will be safe even if she dies, Hiyashi informed the blonde. Do you think that sending my student to enemy territory is going to kill him off? You idiots are sadly mistaken. The voice was heard in the corner of the council room. Jiraiya, what are you doing here? This is a private meeting, Sonata informed her former teammate. Jiraiya came out of the shadows. A council who would exile the son of the village's greatest hero is dirt. But he turned to face the Hyuga, a man that is willing to send his daughter off to her death because she is deemed weak, doesn't deserve to call himself a man. You disgust me, Hyuga. Hiyashi's eyes narrowed at Jiraiya. If she is strong, then she won't die. The cage seal is being placed in her as a precaution. Besides, the boy is too powerful, and it is only a matter of time before the fox takes control. He should have died years ago. Jiraiya went to punch Hiyashi, but Tsunade appeared in front of him before he could connect. Jiraiya, he is entitled to his opinion. Besides, it's not worth it, Jiraiya. The frog hermit calmed down. Suki spoke up. Hiyashi is right, Jiraiya. The kid is becoming too strong. The fox is to attribute for his leaps in power. It's the only explanation why he beat the Uchiha. Jiraiya looked at the lady. Do you really believe that the fox power helped Nara to become stronger than Sasuke? If you believe that, then you're sadly mistaken. Naruto doesn't use the fox power. He only uses his chakra. Sonade was present in the fight. She could confirm along with a large number of the Anbu and most of your children that Naruto beat Sasuke using his own chakra. Jiraiya is right. The boy bested Sasuke on his own without the aid of the QB, Sonai told the rest of the council. Jinwei spoke. Then how did the boy get strong in a short amount of time, hmm? He's been training under Kaito Saichi, Ryuho Minashu, and Jiraiya. Under these threes, his skills would have increased greatly, but the reason why he has increased his signing levels is because of the gravity seals placed in him by Naya Haiwaito. There was a collective gasp among the council. Waido Suki was the first to speak. You mean to tell me that Uzen no Okami gave him gravity seals? Yes, so you see, it doesn't matter, Naruto will continue to get stronger. Tsunade so let Naruto take those missions. I want to see the faces of the council when he exceeds your expectations. My student will succeed in everything you throw at him, Jirai said confidently. I'll leave the decision to Naruto, Tsunade stated. Regardless of what you say, Jiraiya, the boy is a monster. Explain what he did in the earth and rain country then. Back at the ninja outpost, Sasuke defeated the cloud jonin rather easily. It was the same for Naruto. He'd easily dispatched the rock jonin and the rain jonin. They were both on the ground, struggling to get up. I will not let you leave here alive, the rock ninja said in a breath. Neither will I. You had no right, no right. The 
Jonin from the range set before charging at Naruto. Naruto dodged the punch that was aimed for his head and countered with a punch to the shinobi's gut. The punch caused him to fall at Naruto's feet. Naruto looked down at the shinobi from the rain. You say I had no right what I did, but what gave your ninjas the right to do what they did? We have a different viewpoint on what's right and what's wrong, so in your eyes and in the eyes of many, what I did was wrong. I don't care what you think. I did what I did, and it cannot be changed. Accept it, and deal with it. Back in Konoha, right and wrong is in the eye of the beholder. You all may believe what he did was wrong, but if you don't know his reason, then you shouldn't judge, Jiraiya stated in his student's defense. Sumi and Izuka looked at Jiraiya. Lord Jiraiya, what is his reason for slaughtering a platoon that consisted of 120 raid ninjas in their own country? Back at the outpost, the group with the exception of Sasuke was startled to find out that Naruto had murdered 120 rain ninjas. They couldn't believe what the rain ninjas said. This was Naruto that he was talking about. Naruto had his eyes focused on the man at his feet. I have my reasons. What's your shinobi reasons for doing what they did? The rock ninja saw that Naruto was focusing on the rain ninja. Now was his chance. When he went to attack, Naruto looked up at him to see him coming at him. The ninja never made contact. Sasuke sent the ninja into a wall with a kick to the jaw. The rock ninja struggled to get to his feet. How can you defend a murderer? Not only did he kill 120 range in OBE, he... Back in Konoha, Sumi spoke again. He also killed 150 rock ninjas Jiraiya. He did this a couple of days after he slaughtered the rain ninjas. What is the justification for that? Outpost. Naruto answered. It was necessary. The ninja narrowed his eyes at the ninja who answered with no emotion in his voice. Sasuke looked at the ninja he had kicked. What does it matter? Your comrades are dead and there is nothing you can do to bring them back. Instead of worrying about your fallen comrades, you should focus on getting out of here alive. Which, at the moment, is not likely to happen. Udon and Hanabi get the scroll. We only have 20 minutes to get out of here. The two ninjas followed Sasuke's command and came back out of the room with the scroll. Hanabi used Byakugan to make sure that the scroll had blueprints to the ninja base deeper in the land of lightning. Seeing that, she handed it to Sasuke who put it in his pouch. The ring ninja spoke. My brother was among the ninja that died that day. This guy was taken away as someone very precious to me and for that, he will die. Sakura and Hinata had tears in their eyes hearing what Naruto did. They couldn't believe the innocent boy had slaughtered close to 300 shinobis in a matter of a week. Sakura looked at Naruto and spoke through the sobs. Whatever happened to your ninja way, Naruto, it isn't like you just slaughter a bunch of people because you felt it was necessary. That isn't something Naruto would do. That is something a monster would do. Konoha. Kataki Waka spoke for the first time. Anyway you slice it, Jiraiya, your pupil is a monster. To do that because it was necessary is not justifiable. Jiraiya and Naruto both looked up and said in unison, Naruto, anyone in my shoes would have done the same, Jiraiya. Anyone in his shoes would have done the same. Hinata looked at Naruto. Naruto, maybe if you explain why you did what you did, then Sakura wouldn't be so judgmental. But not giving the reasons, it makes you look cold-hearted. Naruto looked at Hinata. The only ones who are cold-hearted are the ones who willingly use the little girl for leverage. Konoha, so you're saying that he slaughtered all those ninjas because of a little girl? Sanade questioned. She knew that Naruto did, but never knew the real reason. Unlike the others, she knew that Naruto wouldn't do this unless his reason was just. Jiraiya shook his head. Not just any little girl. He did it to protect. Outpost. My sister. Not my blood sister, but she is someone that I consider a sister. Naruto turned to Sakura and glared. If you must know, Haruno, I will never break my ninja away. I made a promise to the little girl that I would be there for her always. If I let her die, then I would not have kept my promise. Don't make accusations when you don't know all the facts. If it was leaf ninjas that committed the act, then it would be over 300 leaf ninjas dead. To protect her life, I would kill anyone who harms her. Think what you will of me. It really doesn't matter either way. Naruto stepped over the Rain Ninja and walked past Sakura. He stopped, then turned to speak to the Rock and Rain Ninjas. We're no different, you and I. You willingly attacked me because you lost someone precious to you. And I did what I did to protect my little sister. Our compassion.
passion for those we hold in our hearts will drive us to do what I feel is necessary to protect them or their name. I will not kill you here. You will go back to your respective villages and tell your Kages that the next time they try to use anyone that I hold dear as leverage for an advantage at war, then you will really see a monster. Naruto walked away from the group. Sasuke motioned for Hanabi to knock the guards out, then everyone followed him out of the outpost. It was 8 o'clock, and the sun was setting. The team was now heading back to Konoha. Sasuke gave Naruto the order to lead them to the docks in the Land of Lightning. Naruto had informed Sasuke while traveling that they would be in rice country by 11 that night. The only thing was that they had to reach the docks by 9 p.m. The squad headed through the woods to the docks in Konoha. This is all you need to know. Naruto will tell you if he wants to. It is in my place. I'm leaving O oh, and Hyuga. Hiyashi like a dry. What? Naruto won't die, and he won't let your daughter die if she's his teammate. Even if you place the seal on her, she is going to live through any missions assigned to her. If Naruto has anything to say about it, Hiyashi spoke. I don't care what happens to Hinata. A defect isn't welcome to the Hyuga. Jiraiya shook his head and disappeared. So now he looked at the group of members. Naruto will get missions based on his approval. Also, I will assign Hinata as a permanent member of his team. She looked at the Hyuka head. I'm not doing this because you seek to weed out what you deem as weak in the eyes of the Hyuka. I'm doing this for Hinata. Even if I was to take the choice out of Naruto's hands, he wouldn't mind me giving him S-Class missions. Also, Hinata will become stronger by being with Naruto. The only thing holding her back is confidence. You all think that I have submitted to your decisions, but I have not. When it is all said and done, you will see why I have made the decision that I have made. This meeting is adjourned. All of you, get out of my sight. Sonate had left the meeting and headed to her office. When she got there, Jiraiya was sitting on the couch. She walked up to her desk and rubbed her temples. Want some sake? He walked up and sat in the chair next to her. I thought you would never ask. A docks, 45 minutes later. Naruto and the gang had yet to speak to each other. They arrived at the docks. Naruto had went to talk to the owner of the docks, who happened to be a friend of his. It's been a long time, Kabune. The short, balding old man looked in spa at Naruto. It's been a long time, my boy. How's it been? Rumor has it that the golden fox has sided with the leaf. That wouldn't be true, would it? Yes, old man, it is indeed true. More importantly, can you get us on the boat heading to rice country tonight? The old man looked at Naruto. No, not without payment, of course. Naruto sighed. He knew he was going to have to pay the old man. Naruto reached inside his jacket. Here, this is Icha Icha Paradise. Make out tactics volume 8. This book has been personally signed by Jiraiya himself. If you can get us on the boat. The old man went to grab the book, but Naruto raised his hand to avoid the man's hand from grabbing the book. This book is yours. The old man's eyes illustrated his happiness. Consider it a deal. Just give me that book and head to port 14. Tell Kukai that I said to let you on and consider this was his way of paying me back. I wish you good luck, Naruto, but I have to go to the bat. I mean to my office to straighten out a few things. Sweat formed on the back of everyone's head. Sakura looked at the old man. Walked away and thought, are all men perverted bastards? Inner Sakura chimed in. If I see Kakashi Sensei with that book when I get back, I'm going to kick his ass. Shanaro! Naruto motioned everyone to follow him to the port. Naruto informed the captain of what the old man said. The captain let him on the boat without hesitation. Naruto and the others were sitting in the cargo area of the ship when Hinata was first to speak. Naruto, I would like to know more about your sister, if you wish to tell us. That is, Hinata said in a low voice. Naruto looked at Hinata and smiled. Her name is Hayami Minashu, and she's eight years old. Hokage's office. The girl that was kidnapped was Ryuho's daughter. Hokage asked Jiraiya. Yes, it seems that the rain and the rock combined forces to get the girl. I think their plan was to use the girl so Ryuho could train their soldiers in the Heavenly Sword style, Jiraiya answered. So now they leaned back in her chair. So they had planned on using the girl so her father would train their soldiers. They had planned to attack us all this time. If Naruto didn't step in, I think Ryuho would have trained them. Family means more to him and his style. 
even if it was unintentional, Naruto did this village another service. Back in the ship, you trained under a samurai, Naruto? You not that asked. Yes, I did. It's part of the reason that I'm good with a sword, Naruto answered proudly. Sasuke was quiet the whole time, trying to figure out why Naruto would go so far for a little girl. He didn't understand it. He couldn't comprehend why. Sasuke looked up at the blue-eyed ninja and simply said, Why? Naruto looked at Sasuke. He studied Sasuke to find what Sasuke meant by that question. Naruto understood what Sasuke was asking. Why did I kill all of those men for one little girl? I thought I told you at the outpost. She's someone that I hold dear in my heart. If she or anyone that I cared about was in danger, I would do all that I can to protect them. You're still not telling us the other reason, Naruto. What is it? Sasuke asked. Naruto looked at the sky and smiled. She's the reason why I'm not a monster. She's the reason I'm not a cold-blooded killer. But most of all, she is the reason why I decided to not destroy the leaf. She was my savior. She saved me from my personal hell. The group took it all in. Everyone, with the exception of Sakura, Hinata, and Sasuke, couldn't believe that he had wanted to destroy the leaf. Naruto took his gaze off of the ceiling and looked at the group. To understand the reasons for my action, I should start from the day I left the village. To this time, I destroyed these ninjas. You guys might want to get comfortable. It's a very long story. Everyone inched closer to Naruto, preparing to hear his story. They all looked at him with anticipation in their eyes. Naruto looked at the group and said, It all started on the day that I was exiled in the village.